All right, nerds, it's time to get blue. That's right, folks, it's time to get right up inside GW's brand new shiny box and paint some boys in blue. At the request of the lovely Wilson, and massive shout outs to you, Wilson, what a kind bloke. Uh, we are going to be painting some ultramarines today. So I've got a bit of a slightly different workup for this. We're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo and, and a few other things that, you know, maybe are not super common. Um, but it's going to be a fun and interesting look at one of the new miniatures in one of the colour schemes that you've already seen it done a lot of times. Hopefully you'll be able to see what we do a bit differently to, to create some cool looks. Uh, so yes, huge thanks and shout outs to Wilson for providing the, uh, the two Ultramarines for me to work on. One was a commission and one was provided entirely for the purposes of helping me make content for you lovely people. So thank you so much, Wilson. Let's get into painting some Ultramarines. Okay, so we're going to start off with our miniature painted, uh, just undercoated in Steinal Res Black, like I normally do. And uh, you can see the sub-assemblies that I've done here. We're going to start off airbrushing on some Azul Magico, or Magic Blue, from Viejo Game Color. And this is just going to get us off to, to a nice blue base start. It's quite a bright blue, Magic Blue. And uh, as you will see later on in proceedings, I do kind of regret starting this bright. I'd have, I should have started darker than this, really. But nonetheless, we now have some base coated blue. Shyish purple contrast paint next, as we're going to start to glaze some shadows into that armor. That's our, that's our first target here. You can see I'm starting under the knee pad here, but basically just going to find all the shadow spots anywhere that I want to darken. I'll also panel line with this a bit and just generally get some nice soft glazing in. I do obviously thin this to do that, but that's how it looks once it's all built up. That'd be jubbly. And we're going to come back into our magic blue now. And this time we're going to thin this right back to a, a very, very fine glaze. It's a really high coverage paint, so if you're going to glaze it, you really do have to take it back a lot. And we're just going to blend the transitions where the shyish purple glaze starts and pull them back down into the blue a bit more. I do want this armor to look sort of rough and worn. I don't like super clean space marines a lot of the time. I think sometimes it's nice to have a bit of grit to them. So I didn't blend this perfectly. I just, you know, you can see here, took it back to sort of looking nice. Any old black paint now, you know, the one that I use by this point, but um, we're just going to start blacking in things like the Aquila, the soft armor, anything really that wants to be metallic, anything that wants to be a dark color. We're going to just get some black paint on. Lovely, nice and simple. You'll notice I left the bits around the cloth. That will become clear soon. There's the shield and the shoulder trim as well. Now our main workup is done with Azul Magico and Married Blue. I don't know why I keep calling it a Spanish name. Um, with just various different mixes of these two colours essentially to start pulling in our highlights. Uh, so this is about a 50-50 that I'm starting with but you will start to see me adding more and more and more to it as we get brighter and brighter. And again those highlights are kind of a little bit rough, they're a little bit sort of sketchy because I do want that kind of slightly worn look. I don't want the highlights to look too clean and take away from that kind of battle-ready look. Brighter still now. A bit scratchy. There we go. Yeah, this guy's gonna look like he's been in the wars a bit. The captain that I'm doing with this is gonna be a bit cleaner. And the idea being that, you know, the lieutenant is sort of expected to get in on the front line and get stuck in, and the captain's more sort of giving orders. So his armor just maintains a little bit more cleanliness. There you go, that's how we look once our highlights are done. And I'll just pull over these extra elements where you can see on the visor for the helmet here, I've started brightening this up a lot. That's because I'm going to go to a very light workup. I want a cold undertone with a, a warm overtone on it. Uh, so just getting a nice icy blue there. Into some iron rack skin now. We're going to start uh, laying in the basis for some of the lighter areas. Now, I'm highlighting first of all with this, doing a few sort of pinpoint highlights. I like the kind of warm, cold contrast when painting blue. So as I come up into the top end of my highlights, I do sometimes quite like to switch to a warmer colour. Uh, but I am on a tiny brush here, which I, I, for some reason, decided to start using tiny brushes on this. 
and I definitely regretted it. I'll explain more about that as we go on, but you can see now with a few of those sort of extra pinpoint highlights. He's looking nice and sharp now, he's looking bright. Right, let's grab some Zandri dust. Uh, I want to get the cloth base coated, the bones, stuff like that. And uh, I want to do this before I do the metals that are in those areas, which is why you'll see I left those. The things like the gun holster and the little trinkets hanging from his waist, I haven't touched those yet. And that's because whilst they do need blacking before I do the various things to them, I wanted to get this Zandri dust in first. So just, you know, giving some consideration to my order of operations there. So that's all Zandri dusted in. We'll start mixing in iron rack skin and just pulling in some nice sort of stripy textural highlights. With fabric, I like to keep quite a lot of texture present. I don't really like to go for anything too smooth. This fabric doesn't tend to reflect light in that way. And after a few additions of iron rack skin, eventually getting up to pure iron rack skin, that's what you end up with. That's looking quite nice. It's a good start. There's the shield as well, you can see all the bone parts of the shield have been knocked in now and the, the sort of background main plate of it. Now we can black in those areas, so this is now anything that's going to be brown or black that I haven't already hit, essentially. So the gun holster, the trinkets, the belt, um, just those kind of bits. There's some pouches on the back as well that will need to, uh, to be blacked in. Okay, so that's how that looks now. I also tidied up the shield, as you can see. Everything looking a lot cleaner now. Beautiful, beautiful. Ready to move on to our next phase. Rhinox hide, first of all. I want to start getting the, uh, the belt and the gun holster sorted out. So, Rhinox hide for those, quick bit of base coating. Obviously, I've got this thinned down because it's such a good coverage paint. There's really no need to paint with Rhinox Hide at full thickness. I don't really know many people that do, but in, ca in case you do, stop it. There's no need, it's super high coverage. Getting the uh, sword scabbard done there as well. Scabbard? Is it a, no, it's a sheath, isn't it? Retributor armor next. It's like getting some of that gold in. There's quite a bit of it to do, so it's good to get it done fairly early while your patience is still holding. Especially if, like me, you often paint in a single sitting. A lot of the miniatures that you see me do on stream here are single sitting miniatures. So, working in a way that helps preserve your patience is definitely smart. Things like gold that can be quite fiddly. Do them as early as you can. And again, on that sheath. There we go. That's everything golded now. It's starting to look super blue and bling as we like our ultras to look. I'm going to start shading some stuff now. Uh, Seraphim Sepia, first of all, for the fabric areas, uh, and also for that main backplate of the shield. What I'm actually going to do on the shield here is just go over everything, because I'm going to come in with a Retributor Armor wash for the gold, but the Retributor Armor will just kind of cancel out the effect of Seraphim Sepia over gold. So this just gives us nice, clean shading all over, and it doesn't really negatively affect our gold. On the robe, same sort of thing really. It doesn't matter if I go over the gold, so I'm not really going to worry about it too much. I just want to get my Seraphim Sepia in there. And then crack on with the uh, Rakeland Flesh Shade. That's what I meant. I think I said something different a second ago. <laughs> uh, Rakeland Flesh Shade for all of the gold metallics. You know how to do this. We've all done the, the Rakeland over Retributor workup. It's very classic. And that's kind of why I like it. There are a couple of other gold workups that I'm quite into, but Rakeland over Retributor, you just you know what you're gonna get. You know, we've all seen it enough times now. It's beautiful. As you can see on the shield here, it's also beautiful. Just just a really nice simple workup. Okay, Rhinox Hide and Mars Orange. Now next on our list, we're going to be mixing these two colours together to do successive highlights on all of our leather areas. Again, you've seen me do this very sort of dashy leather workup before. Uh, what I do basically is just keep mixing more and more orange into the brown, painting these little strikes and dashes and stuff. And uh, we're going to skip forward now, go a bit faster to get that done. But as we get towards the end of it, I will add white into that mix. Or in this case, I used iron rack skin because it was what was on my palette. Uh, and just get the sort of final highlights in with uh, some blends of iron rack added to them. You can see here I've got a little bit of iron rack in this and it really starts to amp up the brightness. There we go. Just getting a nice few little edge highlights tickled in. 
good scratchy worn leather. While I've got Iron Rack skin, I'm also going to get onto the visor here. As I said, I wanted to do a kind of warm cold thing, so like a cold base with some warm highlights built up over it. So Iron Rack skin's really good for that because it is a warm tone, you know, it's got some sort of yellowy ivoriness to it, but it also has just a little spot of green to it, which means that it marries well into cold tones. So Iron Rack skin is, uh, is a lovely one to use for this kind of thing. I found that I use it a lot more than Wraithbone. On the tilting plate here, I've also got some nice details that I want to put in. Sorry that this shot is out of focus. The rest of the shots for the tilting plate are in focus, so just bear with me a moment. But basically, we're just getting the quartering done here and uh, starting to map in the, uh, the checkerboard that I wanted on one side of it as well. You can still roughly see what's going on, so I don't feel like it's too tragic that we weren't quite in focus just at this exact moment. I needed to do a zoomed shot, basically, and just forgot to adjust my focus. Silly me. There you go. Now we're all sorted. So now we're just sort of reinforcing that. This is just iron rack skin again, but letting the first coat dry and coming in with the second one just to sort of sharpen up the shapes and get things looking a bit more defined. And then we uh, get some of that magic blue to do the same thing with the blue areas, just again get them looking more defined. Then some of that magic blue just with a little bit of black added to it just to uh, sort of rough up a few areas. I don't want this looking too tidy. The idea of this tilted plate in my head is that it's there to absorb impact coming in. So chances are anything that's painted on it is probably going to get scratched to shit pretty quickly. And uh, chuck a quick ultra in there. The little sort of dot thing above it. I don't really know why. I just thought it looked cool. I use some lead belcher now to do some of the sort of gun metal areas and stuff. I really regretted using lead belcher here. I know in my own head that I don't like it as a paint. It's very unwieldy to paint with. It's a lovely colour, but it's just it, the handling of it is not good. And uh, I should have used my Viejo dark aluminium that I normally use. You've seen me use that a million times. We all know it looks beautiful, but it also just handles so well. However. That is lead belcher in, nice and shiny and bright now, and you can see I've also done all the sort of power circuitry on the back of the shield and that little key that's hanging off a chain. And then we'll known oil all those areas. And again, I'm not even gonna give you uh, real time footage here. I'm just gonna go sped up the whole way as we quickly blip some known oil on there. You know what it's all about. Okay, Gal Vorbach Red. That's becoming one of my favorite paints. Uh, this is what I'm gonna hit in the Purity Seals with. Um, I came up with a bit of a new workup for Purity Seals specifically for this piece, and I really like how it came out, so I think I'm gonna be using it more going forward. So we start out with Gal Vorbach, and I'm also popping that into the Plasma Glow here. This is a good way to show that the same paints can achieve different effects when you apply them in different ways because my workup for the Purity Seals here is actually exactly the same as my workup for the Plasma Glow. I'm gonna take some Emperor's Children now and we're gonna mix that into that Galvorback Red. And so it's gonna form our first run of highlights on the waxy parts of the Purity Seals. But then it's also gonna form our first part of the uh, glowing effect in the Plasma Glow. And it's very interesting how it looks like a convincing sort of pinky purple wax on the purity seals, yet also you'll see as we start to work it up on the plasma coils here, it also looks like a really convincing plasma glow. Getting into pure Emperor's Children now. I think there, there might even be a tiny bit of Iron Rack skin in this, and then Iron Rack skin with just the slightest little bee's dick of Emperor's Children. While I've got Iron Rack skin, at hand, I'm going to sort of highlight some of this bone and parchment stuff as well. Fairly sort of rough, again, quite textural highlights here. Bone is, you know, it's another one of those surfaces that quite likes to be treated with a bit of texture. Then we'll grab a white, again, your preference of white, but use a pure white, don't use an off-white, because we're going to highlight an off-white here. I actually lost my footage, but you can see what I've done there. Just continue those textural highlights. And then uh, also over onto the tilting plate here, and again, use this to just add some highlights to all of the off-white areas. So if you're highlighting an off-white, obviously you're gonna to wanna to use a pure white. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start mixing some of that iron rack skin into my black, and again, just do some progressive mixing to put some highlights onto the black areas. It's mainly the Neo Volkite pistol, also obviously the soft parts of the armor and the pouches at the back. 
but again this is the same sort of deal you normally see you do on these kind of areas on space marines it's uh, just adding continuous amounts of my brighter color in this case i chose the iron rack skin um, and just applying successively smaller and smaller edge highlights uh, and then i go in with the black glaze just to sort of tidy up the edges of it and make it all look a bit neater you can see we're starting to get quite a pretty space marine Okay, I'm going to just uh, tidy up some of the Retributor armor now, just with Retributor armor on its own. Made a little fuck up there and just jabbed it in with my finger just to dull it back down. Yeah, this is just pure Retributor over the shaded Retributor, just to bring up a bit of brightness again and add a few bits of sort of scratchy niceness to everything. Very simple, very quick. And the same with the lead belcher, just pure lead belcher over the shaded lead belcher. I don't really like this idea of doing sort of three stage highlights with lots of edge highlights on metallics. They naturally shimmer, I don't see the need. Uh, again, skinny brush here, regretted it massively. Should have just used my size three. I know that I can freehand with a size three. I'm good at freehanding with a size three. Um, this ended up being really bloody difficult and I had to do loads of correction on it because these tiny skinny little brushes, they just don't hold enough wetness for long enough to be able to do anything meaningful with them before you have to re-dip. And I'm so used now to doing it with a size three, which this is the result of. This is me actually correcting the whole thing with a size three. Um, I'm just so used to doing it now with that larger brush that it works way better. Bit of Mephiston red for the eyes there. Didn't even bother showing you the part of Mephiston red because it only appears on the eyes. Back to uh, that pure white just to dot in some nice top highlights on the armor. These are just, you know, pinpoint reflections. And the brightest little spots corners of things, that kind of stuff. And then uh, this is some really thinned out Rhinox hide here. I just wanted to add a bit of grit into the roby areas, just get a bit more sort of dirt. I'm going to be hitting this with uh, weathering powders towards the end of the workup, and so I didn't want anything to really look too clean, because obviously, or at least anything that was down the bottom there where the weathering powder was going to go. We're going to base up now with Mordant Earth, and that's just because I need to do a few things to the basing before I finish the rest of the miniature. So a quick slap of Mordant Earth. You can also see I've painted that Necron head in in purple. Again, you do that whatever colour you wanted to do it, so I'm not going to show you. And we'll start hitting that Mordant Earth just with a few dry brushes of brown. I think first of all it's some pure Rhinox, and then it's a bit of that Rhinox and Orange mix that I was using for the leather. Um, this is just to start to kind of tone the Mordant Earth more towards brown. So that when I put this dark brown weathering powder on, everything marries together and makes sense. So dark brown weathering powder from Revel. Smash a bit of that around on all the sort of lower sections to get them looking nice and dirty. Go for a bit of a sort of slow build up here. Sometimes I'll just hit it, but we decided to go slow. Bit of artist white spirit as well, just to set that weathering powder. You've seen me do this before. You basically just touch it to certain areas that are covered in weathering powder and it'll just fix them in place. You can hit this with a hairdryer afterwards to evaporate the uh, the white spirit. I normally do. Sometimes if, I'm, if it's the end of a painting session, I'll leave it to dry naturally, but I normally uh, just use the white spirit. And then I made a quick dark oil wash here as well, which again is something you've seen me do a million times before. Um, I've got videos that show it. Um, again, just because I wanted to get that armor a bit darker, I wasn't happy with how bright it is because of that bloody blue. And uh, I did say at the start of the video I regretted the decision to start with Magic Blue. Magic Blue is a good highlight for Ultramarines, but it was maybe a bit bright to start with. And so from there I thought I was done, and actually I think I was actually just worn out from trying to do everything in one session. You can see he looks great, but he's not quite where I wanted him to be, especially for sending him to a customer. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of photos in a second of just some extra bits that I did to him. I didn't get more spinny turntable footage, but basically what I did was just grabbed a scale 75 purple, I think it's called royal purple, just glazed down all of the blue armor a little bit more just to darken it off a touch, um, and just finished off a few bits of script and a few bits of tidying up. You can see here it looks lovely, but it wasn't quite finished when I thought it was. So 
So yeah, I wanted to experiment a little bit there, you know, deviate slightly from the prescribed ultramarine scheme. What we ended coming ended up coming up with in the end there was it, it was a touch too bright. I'll be honest, I'll hold my hands up to that. And so as I showed you in those added photographs at the end there, we did come back in and just glaze over some purple just to filter that down a little bit. And uh, there is, as I sort of alluded to at the start of the video, there's a captain going with that. And um, I've already sort of repeated those same processes on the captain to uh, to have his armor not quite looking so bright. So, you know, thinking all the time, learning all the time, growing all the time, that really is the purpose of what we're doing here together, folks. So uh, I hope you had fun looking at how I've decided to tackle ultramarines this time round. It was a great learning experience for me. And I hope that will give you a couple of little tips that will, you know, maybe point you in different directions that you might not have thought of. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video, folks. Please do not forget to like it if you liked it, to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And most importantly, please check out my new Patreon. It is brand new and it is loaded with value. There will be links in the description to my social media and my Patreon for you to follow if you do so wish. I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.